the wheel of time turns, and ages come and pass, leaving memories that become legend. Legend fades to myth, and even myth is long forgotten when the age that gave it birth comes again. Welcome back. This is the second video in my ongoing project. Now that project started because when I read The Wheel of Time originally, I thought Robert Jordan used a very uncommon word quite commonly, namely, bosom. When the talk of the show started making the rounds, I started wondering, was that actually my imagination or was it really as frequently as I occurred? So I set out to rigorously document every instance of that phrasing. And documenting is exactly what we did last time. Last time, we made it through the first four books in The Wheel of Time, and there was a lot in those books. There was adventure, bosoms danger, bosoms magic, bosoms, and yes, there was bosoms. Twenty-two of them, in fact, at the end of just these first four volumes. This week, the mission continues. I'm diving further into the series, forging a path ahead, and trekking across expanses of exposition, looking for that one key word. How many perky peaks will we encounter this week? Stick around to find out as we continue my quest to document every bosom in the Wheel of Time. He must move his army back where it can be used if the Blight wakes up. Too much bosom showed in the gap of her shawl, and her pale green silk was too snug, too clinging. Okay. Min could not see why she'd gone through the trouble. She herself hated needlework of any sort. The neckline was a little lower now, showing a bit of Leanne's bosom, and if it fits snugger way there and perhaps around the hips. She stood as straight as ever, but her usual walk, a graceful stride, but a stride, had become a sort of glide, with just a hint of a willowy sway to it. Somehow her hips and bosoms seemed more obvious. Yet there were changes too, vast changes. Morghese, by grace of the light, queen of Andor, defender of the realm, protector of the people, high seat of House Traken, so very reserved and stately and proper, wore a gown of shimmering white silk that showed enough bosom to shock a tavern maid in the mall. To be fair, if I'm remembering correctly, she is being under a spell, and is being kind of charmed, and so this is meant to be very out of character. Unbidden, unwanted, memory returned of the next to last time he had dared to let himself hold Kalimdor, images floating beyond the void. The body of a dark-haired girl, little more than a child, lay sprawled with eyes wide and fixed at the ceiling, blood blackening the bosom of her dress where a trollic had run her through. There were two dark-haired women in the shop. One, young and thin, and trying to wipe her nose surreptitiously with the back of her hand, held a bolt of pale red silk clutched anxiously to her bosom. I can only hope you know something to help me find them. Folding her arms under her massive bosom, Mistress Tharn studied her. Know how to hold your temper when it suits, eh? Good. Where else would you fold your arms? There's no other place for them to go. He was looking straight at her eyes, but Lenny's comment made her aware of her dress again. She felt as though glowing arrows were pointing at her exposed bosom. I noticed that you did not save that way-faced Morsa from her fate. And the way you looked at her, I thought big eyes and around bosom had caught your eye. She could have been saying the soup was ready. He wondered how he was supposed to have noticed Morse's bosom, hidden as it was in a fur-lined cloak. If you like it so much, she said firmly, you wear it. Aside from the color, she was not about to show that much bosom in public, whether or not Clarine thought it was proper. Now that was foolish. Men's eyes might wander. Lance had better not. But she knew how to be constant. She was simply not going to wear that dress. Far too much bosom. Seriously, every dress involves the bosom. What happened? Elaine could not stop herself from asking. Barachel? That name sounded familiar. Lacing her fingers over the blanket atop her bosom, Bridget shifted her head on the pillow and put on a look of mock sympathy. She insisted on helping Bridget into the gray silk as soon as her hair had been toweled dry and braided again. The hips and bosom needed letting out, too, but that would have to wait, and even wanted to stitch the hem herself until Elaine's in incredulous stare made her retreat to her own ablutions, muttering as she scrubbed her face that she could sew as well as anyone when she wanted to. 
Bridget wore it now, her black dyed braid pulled over her shoulder so it nestled between her breasts, totally unconscious of the low square neck. Just looking at it made Nynaeve fold her shawl tighter. Bridget could not show a fingernail more of pale bosom and retain the slightest claim to decency. Rewrapping the folded lengths of grey wool one more time, she tied the ends around her waist. The shawl defined her bosom more than she wished, and still exposed a bit of cleavage, yet it was a considerable improvement on the dress alone. Before she quite realized what she was doing, she had untied the shawl and looped it over her elbows. It really was much too hot anyway. No man has that right, for me or any other woman. If I choose to go naked, it would be none of your concern. Masima contemplated her bosom for a moment. Not so much as a hint of admiration lit his deep eyes, only acid contempt, then raised that stare to her face. Elaine was just finishing helping her with the rows of small buttons up the back, and muttering that no one had helped her, as if anyone needed help with breeches, when the wagon door banged open, letting in a wave of hot air. Startled, Nynaeve jumped and covered her bosom with both hands before she could stop herself. As usual, he grinned at Bridget as soon as he saw her, and rolled his lone eye in an ostentatious stare at her exposed bosom. And as usual, she grinned back and eyed him up and down lazily. Even Clarine smoothed her dress as she watched him until Petra took his pipe from his mouth and said something. Then she went over to where he sat, laughing, and snuggled his face to her plump bosom. Wow. Stubbornness kept her arms where they were. She was not about to let him think she was flustered, especially since she was. But surprisingly, his eyes remained on hers. Maybe he was ill. He had never avoided looking at her bosom before, and if Val and Luca was not interested in bosoms or gold? There's a lot to unpack in that one sentence. No, not listening. Leering. By turns at Bridget's bosoms and at her legs. Her hair was not so elaborately done as that of a woman of higher rank, but it still added half a foot to her height. He tried to ignore her, but it was difficult to ignore a woman who insisted on pressing her firm bosom against your arm. But then, why were the wise ones there? Or Berylaine? The green and white dress she wore this morning showed a pleasant expanse of pale bosom. She tried on eight, right there in the front room, before finding one that did fit, after a fashion. It was too tight in the bosom, but thankfully loose in the hips. Who stands for this woman? Romanda said, and pledges for her heart, her heart for heart, soul for soul, life for life. She sat erect and supremely dignified, her plump bosom remaining bare. It's a ritual that requires toplessness. She prefers fail, Davrim, Lady Deera said absently. Arms folded beneath that ample bosom, she eyed Perrin up and down without any effort to disguise it. Every woman either has a really ample bosom or is like really small in her bosom. There is no standard. This time he stopped because he finally realized that Berylaine had entered the room without knocking, something long and narrow and wrapped in a blanket cradled in her arms. Perrin heard the door latch click, and at the sight of her, with half her bosom exposed, fury almost washed everything out of his head. A stout, gray-haired man with no shirt was sitting up on an upended cask on the deck, a gray-haired woman with half a dozen bright slashes across the bosom of her dark dress on his knees. The unstained tower breaks and bends, knee to the forgotten sign. The seas rage and storm clouds gather unseen. Beyond the horizon, hidden fires swell, and serpents nestle in the bosom. What was exalted is cast down. What was cast down is raised up. Order burns to clear his path. Whose bosom? Yeah. Whose bosom is this? That doesn't... I don't... Uh, yeah. Oof. Mike, don't just go off. Your Midwest is gonna show. The bosom to book ratio is increasing. We only got through two books this week because 
one certain offender had more bosoms in it than the first four books combined. Now, again, I, I, I want to be clear. The purpose of these videos is not that the word bosom is inherently bad or that Robert Jordan was a bad person for writing these sentences. I do think, though, that there are some deep issues adjacent to so many of these sentences and how the things are framed that I hope they make you think and have some interesting and subtle conversations. And none of those conversations are meant to be as binary or as simplistic as Wheel of Time Good or Wheel of Time Bad. I will be back. Um, I've also got some interviews lined up with some authors, so I hope you all look forward to that. Um, if you like this content, please feel free to like, share, and subscribe it. And, 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 and y'all, I just I want to take a minute to say just thank you. The, the feedback and the response I got to that first video was absolutely overwhelming. It blew me away all the support and kindness that you all sent this way. So I just, I want to say a minute to say thank you. Like it, it really does mean a lot. So I appreciate it. Um, that's all I have for this week. I'm Mike, the Bowtie Writer. Everyone be kind to yourselves. I'll see you next week and I'll catch you on the flip side. Take care.